What's going on everybody? This is Chip Walton. I'm the AV nerd for Northern Brewer Homebrew Supply. I'm here with one of our awesome retail foot soldiers, Dan. Hey guys. We are in the beautiful St. Paul store in lovely St. Paul. Of course, right? Grand Avenue. We just closed the store. There are people walking by looking at us like, what are those guys doing with the camera and all those glasses of cider? What we're doing with this camera and glass of cider is we want to do a real quick kind of split batch tasting um, of one batch of cider, six different yeasts, and because it's hard cider season, we think it's the time to do it. Real quick, if you like a lot of what I call this versus that videos, different hops in the same wort, different yeast in the same wort, or maybe a bunch of yeast across the cider flight, click subscribe, click like, help us keep these videos coming into your notifications. All right, Dan. What the heck did y'all do? Well, so one of the cool things about working here is, uh, and you may not believe this, but every so often we get in damaged products. And so we got in a bag of the mangrove hard cider without any yeast, uh, without any of the uh, flavoring packets. Uh, so we went ahead and just brewed it up straight as it is. Six gallon batch, divided it into six one gallon fermenters. And then we pitched uh, six of our most popular yeasts for cider, just so we could do a side by side, like you said. Three of them are very, uh, or brand new, excuse me, from uh, Saf Cider. Uh, there is uh, the TF6, uh, which is uh, known for its uh, fruitiness. There is the AS2, which is known for um, in. Uh, leaving behind some residual sweetness. Uh, and then, of course, there is the AC4, uh, which is, uh, pardon me, is for crispness. <laughs> crispness. Get yes. that crispy ciders. So, and then the others are, uh, we used Cote de Blanc from uh, Red Star. It's a uh, white wine yeast, uh, but it is a perennial favorite for the staff. Nottingham, uh, it's an English ale yeast, right. one of the most recommended that you can, uh, that you find online. And of course, good old US05, probably the most popular yeast in the world. Which I appreciate that you bottled those or you capped those with the American flag bottle caps. Yeah, we tried. <laughs> I get jealous. So we've already tasted these. It's not like we're going to do like a full on taste across the board and you're going to sit here and watch 30 minutes of us bumbling through that. I tasted them at home. He's tasted them with the store crew. Let's just kind of get into which ones we liked most and why maybe. Or, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was surprise, no surprise, uh, Cote de Blanc was our favorite. It brought forth the most fruitiness. It enhanced the apple characteristic. It was smooth and enjoyable. Uh, it is my go-to at home, and uh, it's the one I like to recommend to most of our customers, along with uh, probably 95% of our crew here. Yeah. Uh, in fact, we are sold out of it in retail right now, so don't <laughs> come in on Monday morning. <laughs> I almost wondered if it was my personal bias that made me like it because that is what I've used for cider for for I, many years. I thought so too, and then I did a blind triangle, mm. and uh, you know, only one time. I'll admit, don't get on me, bro. Philosophy, um, <laughs> but uh, I picked out the Cote de Blanc. So I will say the one, the new Saf ciders um, that reminded me most of Cote de Blanc was AS2. I felt like when I taste them next to each other back and forth that they kind of have a lot of the same characteristics that I like. I'd agree. Uh, I found that the AS2 did in fact leave behind some more sweetness, however. So uh, whether it's just perception of sweetness or actual sweetness, hard to say, but it's in there and um, it's quite enjoyable. It uh, was one of my top three. What would you say about the new kids on the block, the other ones? What about AC4 and uh, FTF6? Well, the AC4 was um, my second place. I really loved uh, that, um, uh, that freshness that you got from it. It was almost like um, drinking cider at the apple orchard. It is very ripe apple. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The TF6 seems to be the one that threw a lot of us a curveball. Um, and I wonder if that might be because because it's supposed to accentuate fruit. Maybe it wants actually pressed apple. Maybe there's a difference between. I'm not. And I wonder. I don't want to get into the like contents of the bag versus real fruit. Yeah. But we all kind of put the word funky 
Yeah. Funky town. Funky. Uh, almost a, uh, I'd say, kind of a cheese-like at times. Uh, shout out to our buddies over at Midwest. We are going to try it again with the fresh cider by this fall. Okay. So. The thing is, when we say funky, I don't think it's necessarily the worst thing, because I've been on like oh, a mead no. and honey kick all this summer. I smelt it. I taste it. I kind of think buckwheat honey, and buckwheat honey has this reputation for being leathery, funky. This is the one that I kind of was like, I bet fresh fruit and back sweetening would make a world of difference to this. We I, should note, no, like these are just bone dry fermented. Yeah. Not back sweetening. No back no acids, sweetening. No, no, no ac tannins. Nothing added to it. Just straight up juice. So, yeah. Um, and I agree with that. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of funky beers. Uh, I, <laughs> at home, do long-term wild sour fermentation. And so funkier the better, if you ask me. But... Uh, and I can definitely see that working in a fresher fruit with uh, maybe even a blend of different apples uh, where it could be fantastic. Yeah. Um, you know, coming in in our bottom two, unfortunately, were um, Nottingham and the USO5. Uh, the Nottingham, like I said, is one of the most widely recommended. And to me, it had sort of a raw dough-like characteristic. Now, don't get me wrong. Yeah. I love Nottingham. It is a fantastic alias. Uh, and I do see how this could work really well in a mauled or um, spiced cider with that bready characteristic. But straight up on its own, uh, I, it uh, gave me a little bit of a problem. What did you okay. think? I actually, I th so we called it kind of the dark horse. It wasn't my top three. It was number four. But it definitely rose above two of the other ciders. I kind of got a little like a fruity nose, caramelized, like brown sugar, especially as this warms. It kicks off like some interesting brown sugar uh, and kind of just medium rich. Again, it could be because the yeast maybe just isn't going to do quite what cider yeast do and come yeah. out. That's yeah. why you're getting this bready, yeasty. I, but I, bready yeast in a, uh, an English uh, pale ale is fantastic, yeah. and I would highly recommend it if you're making yeah. an ESV. But... Yeah, um, in here, uh, it just threw me off slightly. I was surprised to see it was in the store's bottom two. So then your bottom one, US05. And we yeah. should say none of these are... Oh, I mean, believe me, I'm going to finish these. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, He's got glassware. I got plasticware. <laughs> you can see who runs retail. Uh, so, yeah, US05. Um, you know, I can't say that it was bad, but I can't mm -hmm. say that it was good. It was uh, lackluster, uh, kind of boring. In fact, now if you were going to add in, say, some you know cherry puree or a little bit of mango or something like that, it might brighten it up and give it a spark. But just on its own, um, it was boring, unfortunately. And you know, tried and true USO five breaks my heart to say it. Yeah, y'all were boring. Basic. <laughs> um, I just kind of put the the lingering aftertaste as astringent a little bit. It's got this acidic bite, which would sometimes be good in cider, but I think it's almost just like it's only acid, and then it's kind of like just a little like neutral mm -hmm. after that, which yeah. some of these other ones are leaving more apple behind, even though they're bone dry. Um, mm. So yeah, I had this as my bottom one. So my personal favorites are not the order here. Cote de Blanc, AS2, AC4, Nottingham. TF6, US05, you say, for the store? For the store in general, our consensus was the Cote de Blanc, the AC4, the AS2, then the TF6, Nottingham, and the US05. I think it's cool, though, that ale yeast can work. I will say uh, a local cider maker, Josh Landy, one of the best, and he has dozens and dozens each year because he just does different varieties, different blends of different varieties, different yeasts. Um, the Burton Ale fermented cider that he made a couple years ago, I was like, this might be the best cider I've ever had. My so, personal favorite, okay. and I give this recipe out all the time. I ferment out uh, some of my fresh cider with uh, the Saison and Stein's Monster from Omega. Oh. And then uh, I blend uh, approximately four and three quarters gallons with an entire bottle of a nice jammy Cabernet before bottling. What? <laughs> Try that it. That is awesome. No Try way. Try it, then send me your love. <laughs> and two bottles. 
All right. Is there anything else you want to say about hard cider season, fermenting, uh, the yeah. world of yeast choices? You know, uh, don't limit yourself to champagne yeast. Uh, I know that 99 out of 110, <laughs> 100 recipes online are going to tell you to use a standard champagne yeast, but there's an entire world of sensory flavors out there and experiment. Uh, it's benefit of the job, but uh, you know, it's something that you can do at home very easily. Investing in a couple of one gallon uh, fermenters, minimal, minimal expense. Let us know if you have any questions, brewmaster at northernbrewer.com. We've got some fresh press cider buys coming up. Uh, sign up for our emails. Um, but yeah, year round, something like this, or even just you know your favorite non preservated apple juice from yep. the market. Year round, you can be doing this. Citric as a preservative is fine. Oh. Any potassium uh, or chemically sounding is not. <laughs> sorbates and whatnots yes citric yeah. acid's okay though i yes. don't even think i knew that so that's yeah. good so um you know there is a uh, uh a guy named joe who sells a uh, honey crisp blend that uh, i find particularly nice uh to uh to use when it's off season and i'm looking for something to uh uh to make instead of a beer let us know how it goes for you put it in the comments below hit us up thanks Cheers, guys, guys. Here, toast your favorite. Pow! Pinky's out. And dump your <laughs> least favorite on the floor. Oh, just kidding. I'm going to drink that one too. I'm going down the line. <laughs>